Welcome back to Blockster.com. We are here joined today by Philip from Soul Flare. We're in Abu Dhabi for Solana Breakpoint and super excited to learn more about Soul Flare and all that they're doing in the Solana ecosystem. Tell me, Philip, how has your week been so far? Uh, absolutely amazing, honestly. I mean, there are 7,000 people out here. It's the that the atmosphere is absolutely buzzing <laughs> and uh, we got a ton of announcements. We got 50 people here. So 50 Sulphur team members are here. Um, this is our Super Bowl and uh, we're super excited to be here. That's incredible. Huge team, huge presence here at Solana Breakpoint. Tell me more about Soulflare. I know you mentioned it's the gateway into the next evolution of finance. Tell me more about what that looks like and how that might change the look and feel of DeFi and wallets. Yeah, so basically we have the traditional system. We have DeFi and crypto and everything that uh, that is currently up and coming. And we feel like in the next five years, there's going to be like a merger of these two worlds and that we're going to pick and choose the best of these both worlds. So what that means is that you're going to be really, you're going to really effortlessly on-ramp and off-ramp out of crypto. So on-ramp through potentially virtual bank accounts, off-ramp through payment cards or uh, again uh bank accounts but in the in the middle you're going to uh, experience all the benefits of DeFi. so you're not getting the one percent or less than one percent that you're getting in a bank but you're getting DeFi yields you can get loans you can go do whatever you want to uh in a very permissionless uh way and the best thing about it is the self-custody aspect. So that's also a, a core tenant of Soulflare. So everything we, uh, we do has to be self-custodial so that uh, the user is in, uh, uh, the, has the ultimate control over uh, their assets. And uh, I think that this concept is very powerful, liberating, uh, and we hope to spread it to as many people out there. That's so exciting. And I know you've mentioned that stable coins and self custody are really important parts of what you're doing at Soulfair. Can you dive a little deeper into that? Yeah, sure. So uh, when someone asked me, like, what is the killer use case of crypto? Like, the, what's the killer app of crypto? Um, I always tell them that it's currently possible to send five cents or five hundred billion dollars from one part of the world to the other part of the world in sub-seconds su for sub-sense. Like just that concept in and itself is, is mind-breaking, honestly. And uh, this enables so many new use cases, like a whole new world of, of possibilities that uh, haven't been uh, possible before. So uh, we, we see this uh, as a huge opportunity. Um, there are some projections actually that by 2030, 90% uh, of all money flows will be through stable coins. Uh, we've seen this, I don't know, four years ago already. So we're definitely building towards that and making those money flows as easy as possible. That's so attractive and friendly to the everyday user that's not in crypto. Tell us about how your AI assistant is really attractive to non-technical people. Yeah, so uh, crypto at first can be a little bit daunting to people because it's, it's, it's a, honestly, it's a new concept. It's something new uh, and uh, people have to get used to new. There's new language that they have to learn uh, and new concepts. Uh, and we basically figured out that um, when users ask something in plain language and get a response uh, they feel comfortable with, uh, that that really helps with trust and uh, confidence in some of these actions. So uh, instead of you going through rigid flows and I don't know, um, putting in six different variables, you can just say, hey, if I let me know where the best yield opportunities currently are. And our AI assistant actually um, discovers all the yield opportunities. It tells you, hey, there's like five of them. This one's the best. Would you like to invest some of uh, your funds in there, you can tell, hey, I want to invest, I don't know, 5%, and then it automatically does that for you. So uh, uh, in essence, you're still in ultimate control, so you actually know what you're signing up for, but um, you have a whole new world of possibilities when it comes to stating what you want. 
because as of right now we just have very rigid flows like there's the ux is very limited and with that ai system we're actually opening it up to a lot more uh, that people can use so right now when the everyday user goes and, and uses a crypto platform they have to swap and choose which asset they want to swap into and it's a very manual labor laborious process so this is a integrated prompt engineering style of ai yes uh that's it and especially when it comes so when there's very um when there's very plain actions then uh the current flows are okay so if you know that you want to swap solana right now for usdc okay that works right now uh pretty good but if you want to say hey I want to uh, buy some Solana if it drops for 20% and then immediately sell it if it goes up by 40%, then these flows don't, don't exist in current wallets. But this is something um, that we can actually gather from the intent that the user actually uh, states. So <clears throat> what we want is basically to accelerate um, the time from intent to, in uh, to execution and also open up the world of uh, of options to the user. Wow, so you can actually set stop losses and Con subsequential stop losses or take profits. You can say custom alerts. You can uh, mix different asset classes. You can say, uh, hey, if uh, I know if Nvidia is up 10% and Sol is down 20%, then buy me an NFT. So these type of modular actions are totally possible with it. Wow, that is revolutionary for all people, even in crypto. It's a very taxing process <laughs> yeah. to just do everything manually. That's always what people say is the, the, the hurdle, right? Is just yeah. trying to learn how the system works. So you mentioned that with your AI assistant, that's also gonna change the UI uh, and, and De DeFi as a whole, right? How is it gonna affect the UI aspect? So at first, um, you're going to have an AI assistant where you actually like ChatGPT where you prompt it. Uh, but the cool thing is that uh, it basically um, creates the UI by itself. So you say, hey, I want to do this, this, and this. We have a, a couple of, comp uh, we have a, a library of components that then craft the UI around that and the UX experience around that. So um, it's going to be, uh, it's very modular and very extensive. So it's, <clears throat> I think it's very cool. That's just the first step. Uh, the next step would be to implement it uh, into flows where it feels very natural already. And um, yeah, we're looking at exciting times here. And you've already been doing that. Congratulations on your recent launch of the Shield hardware wallet and the debit card, the self-custody debit card with MasterCard, that's amazing, congratulations. Tell me more about that and why that's attractive to people on and off of crypto. Yeah. So uh, the MasterCard debit card is very cool because it's a, it's a self-custodial debit card. So <clears throat> usually crypto cards right now function by <clears throat> work like that, that you actually pre-fund an account <clears throat> and then it spends from there. Uh, which is also kind of dangerous because that pre-funded account can go down. So if you all remember that FTX had a card, <coughs> so and if you have funds on that FTX card, they would all be lost. So in our case, <coughs> it's a completely self-custodial card. That means that funds are always sitting in your wallet and just at the time of spending, get pulled out of your wallet. Mm -hmm. So you're always basically secure that your assets are safe. That's awesome. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the second product that you mentioned is actually the, the, our Shield, the, the software hardware wallet. We've been in the, in the wallet space for a very long time. So we've been building software for five years now. We've seen the progression of, of both software wallets and hardware wallets. Um, we've seen that hardware wallets started out basically um, as, as very simple devices, as chips. So a hardware wallet is basically just an offline chip that stores your keys and uh, that signs transactions without ever exposing them. So this is what actually increases the security of your assets. <clears throat> but over time, those hardware wallets have become way too complex because they've expanded far beyond their primary job. They needed to expand far beyond their primary job because they want to support many different software wallets and on many chains. And then those software wallets 
are actually not as advanced, for example, as Soulflare, where they have reliable um, transaction simulations, constant threat monitoring, uh, blacklists, and so on. So Harvey Wallet's company stepped in to fix that. So they wanted to have reliable transaction simulations. This is why, that's also why clear signing is currently the number one marketed benefit of hardware wallet companies. Like something that's an extra job of theirs, but it's being displayed as the primary job because it keeps you safe. But we turned this around because we've seen, okay, um, they became from an offline chip, they became a whole device that needs a screen, that needs to charge, that needs to be connected via cable or Bluetooth, and it's not really portable. So I have a, all of the hardware wallets out there, and I don't take them with me. So I always have a backpack, and then it's not backpack. I can't put it just in my back pocket. And uh, we figured out, okay, if we just keep our hardware wallet to Soulflare, which has all of those underlying software features that are very important to the user that actually build the, the security aspect of your uh, everyday crypto experience uh, and we can keep it simple so we can stay that super simple offline chip uh, with no screens no batteries no cables no Bluetooth truly portable and uh, we can actually keep it super affordable too because uh, our hardware wallet starts at $49 which is insane compared to run and get one run and get one. <laughs> you can you can order one uh, on our web shop but uh, that's insane compared to the other wallets uh, hardware wallet companies out there and uh, we're very proud of that because it's also a little bit democratizing the the the, the access of it uh, there are many people who are just priced out uh, at the price point at 150 dollars for a hardware wallet and uh, we're very excited about uh, the hardware shield, uh, the, the software shield launch. That is incredible. And I know that being able to trust who you're working with is so important and the security is everything. Yeah. Tell us, I know there's people that are new to the idea of AI. Tell us about how your use of AI is trustworthy and helps them with their security. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to our AI assistant, it's very important to, to know that the AI, the only thing that the AI does is basically figure out the intent of the user. The action I'll let it's Unbelievable. <laughs> you had a fan, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go again. Okay, what did I add? Um, the AI system, AI system. How, how does yeah. it help with security? Yeah. So I know there's a lot of new people to crypto and maybe even people on crypto that are new to the idea of AI. Can you tell us about how your AI assistant also... Is this real? <laughs> <laughs> we got to get bloopers, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At this point, we're going to get a lot of them. <laughs> That's okay. hilarious. Okay. I know there's a lot of new users that are still getting comfortable with the idea of AI and trustworthiness, reliability is everything. Can you tell us how your AI assistant is very secure and and benefits the end user? Yeah, sure. So um, it's very important to understand, especially for those of you who use ChatGPT and they give them false information, uh, that uh, in our case, everything that the AI, do, uh, AI does is basically uh, tries to figure out what your intent is. So you put your request out there it gathers what the intent is but then the outcome or what you're before you what uh that the outcome that you want to sign is something that is very deterministic so it's an action that uh can't be vague so you're definitely going to see okay uh this is going to delegate i don't know 150 dollars so that if soul reaches a certain price then this will trigger so it's not something that is vague and in the end you're still uh, in control. So it's not that the AI agent does something for you on its own yet, but it's uh, unless you give it a very precise uh, requests and, and, and confirm all of that. So the probabilistic nature of AI, gathered intent, deterministic um, actions that we have, uh, set of actions that we have 
built in our backend will basically fulfill that uh, intent and then we uh, can have uh, the results that uh, you want. That's incredible. Thank you so much for elaborating on that. And we're here at Solana Breakpoint. You mentioned there are thousands of people on Soulfire. There's growing 4 million plus users. What's your biggest hurdle with mass adoption and how are you overcoming that? Whew, that's that's a good question. Um, I, I think that we as wallets or as industries still have a uh, pretty long way to go. So uh, when it comes to to the overall UX. So uh, I think a lot of the things need to get better. So especially the, the aspect of getting in, getting out, uh, out of crypto, uh, but also the language and just remove all the friction points that are currently out there. So I think that um, our AI assistant uh, will definitely help there. Uh, I think all those efforts that we're doing at, with uh, the on-ramps and off-ramps, the virtual bank accounts, the cards, uh, will also help there and um, I think that uh, especially the, the the mainstream acceptance so when stable coins or more I would say more uh, conservative yields aspects uh, go really live I think that's awesome because uh, as of right now crypto has been, has this speculative dogma to it that people are just I mean here for the speculative nature of it, but crypto is far more beyond that. That's just like one of the use cases that that emerged, but we have so many cool things that could actually change the world. And I think that uh, with 2026 uh, will be basically that break point <laughs> of uh, crypto getting uh, into mainstream. Incredible. That's so exciting. I know that you're growing in mass numbers right now, but it's always a work in progress. So you are the only wallet on Solana from my understanding. Tell us how that journey started a little bit and if you feel like the Solana ecosystem is ready for you. Uh, we're not the only wallet, we're the only Solana exclusive wallet. So there are many wallets that have uh, that support Solana, of course, but uh, we were actually the first wallet that has been built on Solana. Uh, and we always straight, uh, stayed true to Solana, so we've always been just a Solana wallet. We never gone multi-chain. Um, and that's just because, um, honestly, we think that 90% of everything of value in crypto will be built on Solana. Wow. So uh, we have this strong conviction that this is the chain to be. There will be, of course, outliers out there like the hyper liquids of the world. But um, we think that it's super important to focus on something that we believe in. And uh, we think that Solana is the place to be. So. We're not uh, expanding uh, anytime soon to other chains uh, because, again, Solana is, is the place to be. Incredible. Well, there you have it. If you're looking for a safe self-custody wallet solution, look no further than Soulflare. Thank you so much, Philip, for your time today. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you.